If you thought last week was rock bottom, keep thinking. They're still falling. They have yet to hit rock bottom, as bad as this looks. You watch your Philadelphia Eagles today, losers 27-10 to the New York Giants. The pathetic New York Giants as Nick Sirianni walks off the field. By the way, there he is. Dom DeSandro back on the field. It looks like he's walking off the coach. So that's one positive for the game. Dom is back. Other than that, they stunk as they have for five of the last six weeks. Befuddled, without passion, without intensity, without extra effort, without want to. With, they're just going through the motions. And you watch this team, and if you recall what we said during the pregame program to a man, Barrett Brooks, Ruben Frank, Ron Jaworski, we all thought they'd take the next game, next week, in the playoffs. I do not think that now. I don't, I think, uh, Ruben saying he, 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 never think, he never thought it either. Fine, he didn't think it either, but guess what? This is where it ends for the Philadelphia Eagles in the regular season. A loss to the New York Giants, a loss to Tampa Bay. Next week, it says right here, there's nothing that they're going to get fixed from this week to next. As you look at this, and here's Matt Patricia. Matt Patricia, who's dropping a man with consecutive 10 sack seasons back in coverage. And the same with Josh Sweat, who's not covering the guy he's supposed to cover when he is dropped back in coverage. They don't know what they are doing. The coaching staff doesn't, the players don't, and then when you wind into that, the fact that they have lost the desire to play hard. Mike, that's what's, that's what's most damning right there. The mere fact that this team is not fighting. They're not going out there with the, with the heart that it is to play football. This is, this, is, this is disrespecting my sport, a sport that I played 12 years with. I have never walked off the field the way these guys are walking off the field right now. I mean, they don't even look mad. They don't even look pissed off. It's like they're just out there just going through the motions. I mean, come on now. This doesn't make any sense to me. There's A.J. No, Brown well. hugging Cal Grant Calcaterra, just, hugging his teammates. We don't know his future, but it didn't look good the way he left. Yes, Ruben. Just to put this in perspective, you know, we talk about the worst collapses in NFL history. There's never been a team before that opened the season 10-1 and one and didn't win 12 games, and they had an extra game to do it. It's never happened. This is one of the greatest collapses in history to be where they were a month and a half ago and be where they are now. And not just losing, but getting embarrassed and humiliated on by a the weekly worst teams. basis by bad teams, bad quarterbacks, journeyman quarterbacks. Uh, it's it's as shocking as anything we've seen. People talk about 94 and Cotite, 7 and 1 to 7 and 9. That was never a good team. They weren't in the Super Bowl the, the year before. This is a collapse that's unprecedented, not just in franchise history, in NFL history. Yeah, I, I, I will try to simplify it, if that's possible. <laughs> Go ahead. The eyeball test. Yeah. yeah. We all watch a game. Millions of fans of the Eagles watch, watch that game t this evening. We're all embarrassed. Absolutely. We're all embarrassed. All I'm embarrassed word. by the performance. This team now, for two months, two months, Mike, you mentioned the games, has looked like an ill-prepared professional football team, not worthy to represent what we believe is a great city, and we deserve better than that. I'm to sure put that, I, I thought you mentioned last week against Arizona it was rock bottom. I thought it was. The way that team came out today, I'm embarrassed for them, for the preparation, the time that guys been to put that kind of product on the field against the New York football Giants, a team they are better than. I know I'm probably crazy. Not just that. I mean, the fact that Dallas was down 10-7, and they were already falling apart. They had a chance. I mean, look, Dallas probably wasn't going to lose that game. but It was 10-7. You're Washington's correct. Washington's up 10-7, and the Eagles are already falling to pieces with a chance to maybe win a division and get a number two seed. And even that wasn't enough motivation to get them to wake up and play like a real football team. That's the most alarming thing about it. As we officially welcome you to Eagles Post Game Live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance, Barrett Brooks, Ron Jaworski, Ruben Frank, I'm Michael Barkan. As the Eagles go down 27-10 to 10 in Game 17 against the New York Giants, and, and really... The record won't tell the story because if you look at, at an 11-win team in a 17-game season, that's a 647 winning percentage. That's 105 wins in baseball. That's 53 wins in the NBA. That's pretty darn good. It's only until you examine what happened, as Ruben said, after a 10-1 and one start and the fact they really went into the tank and couldn't figure their way out of the paper bag, a wet paper bag at that. They just could not figure it out, whether they're not practicing right, 
whether the move from no, it's deeper the than side. All that. I know, it's deeper I, there's, than but, there, yeah, but yeah. there's so many different reasons that go into it, and I don't think any of us thinks they're going to fix it in one week's no, time. It, 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 it's simple to say, you know, okay, we're in the playoffs. That's what we're going to get. We're in the playoffs. We can run it for three. We, you've been saying it for years from your Steelers, run of, of three road wins and a Super Bowl champion. Garbage. We, the, I said the eyeball test. We look at this team. We're probably going to try to spin it next week. Like, okay, maybe, maybe we can turn around no. until we can beat Tampa. I have no confidence in this football team. And, and quite honestly, I've, I've, I've lost confidence in the coach and both coordinators. Some of the play calling was atrocious. Say, Marcus Mariota comes to the game. It's like the Giants knew the huddle call. They played the bubble screen. Well, how many times we mentioned that this yeah. year? And picked it off. I, I can't remember the last time I've seen a bubble screen picked off. But it's picked up, so we're predictable of what we want to do. The defense couldn't tackle once again. I mean, <laughs> Tyrod Taylor goes throws over 300 yards. Are you kidding me? That's good. This, yeah, yeah, he's great. He's a, you know, great, great. He's a great, veteran. Mark. He's a wily <laughs> veteran, I'll tell you that. Yeah, that biggest, yeah he was tonight. Seems mm-hmm. everyone, you want, to, you want to get healthy, play the Eagles defense. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's, it's, the most damning thing about this whole thing is it's not necessarily the play. I'm not even talking about the play calling. I'm not talking about, you know, what the coaches are saying. It's more so the effort that I saw on the field. That's the worst thing about it. The lack of effort, the lack of wanting to be great, the lack of going out there and trying to oppose your will on somebody, the lack of, you know, letting this guy in front of you whoop your tail. The guys, the, the, the Giants wanted it more. That's the worst thing about it. I think the worst thing to me is that it's not, I mean, you guys are both right, but it's not any one thing. That's going to make it so much harder to fix. Yeah, it's coaching. Yeah, it's the roster. Uh, Yeah, it's personnel. Yeah, it's the the schemes. Uh, Yeah, it's the effort. All those things are true, but it's everything. Like, how do you fix all that stuff? Well, certainly don't do it in six, seven days. Well, then let's reverse design it, if you will. And as they say, what made them win all those games to a 10 and 1 mark? They didn't play, you know, uh, paper champions. They were playing. They, they were playing good football. They weren't playing great football. We, they, they masked the performance because they were winning. We all found a way to say good things because they were winning. Oh, they're tough. They're gritty. They know how to win, to win with the game in line. But eventually that catches up to you. This is the National Football League. These other coaches, these other players are highly paid as well. They make you play to your weakness. And if you've got weaknesses, eventually they get exposed. And that's what has happened with this football team. As time has gone on, their weaknesses have been exposed, both offense, both defensively, especially in the last week. But today, even offensively, we couldn't be a drop today. I mean, it was awful from the offensive and defensive perspective. Mm-hmm. If you can't be a drop, you're, 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 you're big trouble. Let's go to season off the rails presented by Discover Lancaster Tourism. And it started with a 10 and 1 record. That was good. Yeah. And then they lost five of their last six Not games. So good. Not only did they lose five of their last six games, but they lost five of their last six by an average score of 29.8 to 20.5. So you're getting beat by an average 10 points. And there were a couple of 35 point games or 30 point games that they put in those those six games. Well, they, they weren't competitive. I mean, at all. The, the, whatever the, the numbers Giants say, game, they won. when the, the game, was, game was, close. was close. Well, it was close. They had a 17 point lead. Yeah. So they That's weren't all. competitive. They more than that. You give them an 18 point lead, no one beats that well, team. They would have. They finished with a plus five point differential on the season. Plus five. One and more they touchdown, finished, they would have been outscored for the year. Finished with the oh, number sorry. five seed and will face the number four seed, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at Tampa in the wild card round next week. We do not know yet what the start time or the day of that game. As yet. Normally, you say, go ahead. No, I, I say, Michael, when you're on that 10 and 1 start, and I, I bring that stat in every week to our meeting, I assure you, you turn the football over this league, you're going to lose. We were dodging the bullets early. We were turning the football over at a, at a high pace. We were negative in turnovers, yet we were finding a way to win. Well, look at what happened down the stretch. We started losing. The turnovers continued. If this game has a, has, has a great way of evening out as, as things go on, and you pay the price for making mistakes. Again, four turnovers again today. We're turning the football over at an alarming pace, and you can't beat anyone being negative in turnovers. Plus one or better, you win 75% of the time. Minus one or, or worse, you lose 75% of the time. We're on that minus track right yeah, now. Yeah, and they've won 20 in a row when they've been plus one or better, which is, I mean, if you want to look at one thing, one, that's it's an most. important stat. 20 yeah. in a row. Uh, the Jets game, they turned it over four times. Seattle mm-hmm. was three times. Today was four times. You're not going to beat anybody doing that. I, w- I want to settle something with you, Ruben. I want you to explain it to me because you obviously disagree every time I say Hassan Reddick is dropping in coverage. No, Dro- hang I on. Don't... Josh Sweat is dropping in coverage. It's, I, I know you think it's no big deal, but because they don't do it, and by the way, as you know, Hassan Reddick is a 10-sack guy, yeah. so he's a First pass rusher. They're dropping him back, and he doesn't know 
know what to do when they do drop well, them first back. First of all, I mean, teams have been running zone blitz concepts for, for 30 years. Buddy Absolutely. Ryan used to drop Clyde yep. Simmons back and Reggie, and Reggie. in coverage and, and blitz somebody. Um, that's about the hundredth biggest issue on this team <laughs> right now is how many times Hassan Reddick is dropping back. I don't know how many times. But, but, but I wonder what it means in, in, in the mind of Hassan Reddick. He's a sag master. This is what he wants. It's, I'm not saying it? I like oh, it. No, I'm, not, I'm just I'll, saying I think it's about a hundredth in the list I, of see, issues. I don't because I they're getting big plays that, in, in today's case, added up to to touchdown scoring drives for the Giants That's, and last week for yeah. the Cardinals. Look, let's be honest. So, you know, Reddick has he's made the Pro Bowl. But he hasn't been as good as last year. Uh, second half of the season, he hasn't been hasn't been great. And they're trying to find things to you, you know, need to, to do play with, with a lead for Hassan Reddick to be a, a genuine impact player. And That's he's not. And how about Josh Sweat finishing the season with eight? Straight games with no sacks. I mean, look, that whole D line has underachieved. Fletch didn't play today. He's been their best defensive lineman. Uh, that whole that whole group has underachieved. Yep. BG's played well for a guy's 35 limited snaps, but you know, you look at, and that's why I, I, I say that because when I look at the D line, to me, stuff like Jordan Davis. Yeah, being completely invisible the second half of the season. Jalen Carter took a step backwards the last couple months. Uh, Josh Sweat, he you know, goes, well, yeah, ten, one sack his last ten games. This guy was an eleven sack guy last year. So the, you just go through each one. Nolan Smith uh, not making the impact we thought. So uh, a handful of plays that Hassan Reddick's dropping back. I'm not going to get too worked up about it because it's not even it's not even on the radar. Okay. In the issues thing, that, with this team. Second thing, tell me if this is on the radar. The switch from Sean to Sy to Matt Patricia. Of course, and the, that's and he's the, using that's, different terminology according to Hassan Reddick. It's, it's, it's got to be an issue. Well, right? it is an issue because number one, these guys don't know what to do. I mean, you know, they're, they're back there. I, I watched them. I watched this Giants offense pick us apart. Just like you said, guys dropping back everything. They brought a blitz. They brought the safety. In the first blitz they ran, they brought the safety down, and they blitzed them. And where does the ball go? They ran a slant right up the side, uh, middle of the field for a long play to their receivers. That, that's the problem that I see. The guys just don't know. If you bring somebody, you got to replace that person. A lot of times we, we, we totally lose where our coverage is and when they're out on the field. I mean, I'm like looking like, why is this guy running wide open for big, big chunk yardage? That's a lack of understanding of where you need to be and how you need to go about running the defense. They just don't know. And, you know, it's hard to get max effort when you're not doing that. And that's, the, like I said, one, one of the biggest things to me is the lack of effort while they're out there. You can hide some of the other stuff, but you can't hide lack of effort. I see guys, you know, once the ball passes them, they're jogging down. If you don't jog, you run. I mean, they, these guys are jogging around. It's, it's too much it's, it, it's too much laissez-faire attitudes out there. They just don't care. They don't give a damn. And I think perfectly put, and Ruben, you're, you're at practices as much as you, you can see. Are, are they going all out? Do you, do you like what, oh, yeah. what I you mean, see? You, look, you watch practice, you can't tell that this is a team that's falling to pieces. I mean, the practices are fine. We're only out there for, you know, for small portions of it. Uh, I don't think that's the problem. I, mean, I think, I think it's, it goes a lot deeper than that. Uh, and uh, you know, I, don't, I don't think it's so, any... You're, you're 100% there. Some, something is wrong. He's there all the time. We all have people that we know and we, we speak to. There's something wrong. I don't know what it is. But when you get to the point of, and, and I've said this on a pregame show, when you start getting to, let, let's call meetings, Let's have a private meeting, players only. Which meeting, they did. Which they did. Which they did. And I, I'm a, you know, I'm a believer in this. You go into that meeting with one problem, you come out with ten. Because everyone, the, the one problem that we want to discuss, that was talked about. Then everyone said, Hey, we got a meeting. Hey, I, I don't like to be Barrett's blocking right now. Well, I, you know, he, you know, he broke curfew last week. No, did you? <laughs> yeah. You're no, talking players all, only. Players only. This is the stuff that starts coming out. And what you think is me? Oh, let's calm things it's down. It's desperation. It's, it's desperation. And then with the one problem becomes ten. And then you get a performance like when this. When we talk about it, it's the lack of belief in the players themselves. The lack of belief that they know they can come out there and change that. The lack of belief that they believe in the system. They believe in the coaches. They believe in the guy sitting next to them. There's not I don't one, see that belief. There's not one guy in that locker room that thinks they're going to beat the Bucs. Right. Let's be honest. No, no. Did, no, did, no, no. did the lack of belief exist in the 10-1 and one run? Is that possible that they could have amassed that kind of a, a win-loss I, I just record think, I think and the, they felt that I way the then? the 49ers and Cowboys losses yeah. kind of cut their heart out. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think they realized we're just not in those teams' class, and – they just yeah, felt, they're, they're they just pretty much embarrassed in those they games. Talent-wise, didn't, yes. didn't, didn't match They, they laughed at us. I mean, yeah. you, yeah. look the way they left, they left the field. They never those recovered from those games. Yeah. That was 42-19 against the Niners, 33-13 against Dallas. Let me throw something out there. This is crazy, but they have no chance to beat the Bucks with Matt Patricia running defense. Do you agree? 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. You'll have a chance. Uh, it's Why not like 10 put percent. Sean Desai back at your oh, <laughs> It no, wasn't it as bad as this. You at least you no have a chance. There's no way they will admit they made a mistake. Well, it's obvious Case they closed. made a mistake. Yeah, but they're not, they won't do yeah, it. But the I would do it but, because but, that's your only chance. And guess what? If you really think that, I'm with Ruben because it was so outrageous what they did in the, in the first place. Why can't they then admit, okay, it's screwed up. It's not Seriously. Working. We're still in so the playoffs. Let's go back to Sean Desai. It can't work. I don't know what you're drinking during watching the game. But that ain't happening. I know it's good stuff. That ain't happening. There's no way. There's no way this organization, like, Nick Sirianni, get admit. Oh, sorry. We want to. We want a mulligan. We're going to go back and change what, things what, up. What, what about Howie no and way. Jeff? Forget about Nick Sirianni. What if Howie and Jeffrey wink, wink, said, "You know what, Nick? I think we ought to put Sean back in there where he was." Well, they're the ones that made the decision to take him out in the first place. I mean, come on now. I don't believe that the coach said, "I look, I need to put, you know, take, you know, Desai out and put Matt Patricia." And here's the I don't thing. think that was a. I don't think that was his no. call. He's just not going to do that. That was his guy. I liked he the decision when they made it. Full you disclosure, did? I, I, did. I did. I, I did. did. I thought things were yeah, so bad. Wild, you're flip-flopping. I okay. I didn't. No, I'm changing my mind. And I was he's flip-flopping. Yeah, I was okay, wrong. But here's the, here's well, the biggest, at least you admit he's wrong. Now here's the bigger question. Would it help? Would it help if that, if that happened? Can it be They've any worse than what we just saw? No, no, you've already said it. You've already said it. The things that are wrong right now are things that, that can't be changed right now. They have to wait until the offseason. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's personnel. It's um, the systems that they're running. I mean, nothing is working for them. The lack of, 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 of ingenuity in the offense, I mean, as far as motions and, and setting up plays to set up other plays, I don't see that. You know, you can run plays, like you can run a run play, or you run this run play, and then you turn around and run the same run action and throw over the top. I don't see plays setting I mean, up other I, plays. But there's only so much you can change in the next week, and one thing you change is – Defensive coordinator. Okay, how about I'm, this? I'm, I'm all in on Sean Desai here. <laughs> Second <laughs> question: Had they left in there, Ron Jaworski? Had they left Sean Desai in place? Would we be looking at what we're looking at now? No, no. You don't I, think so? I, I know I, it, 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 the whole defense was kind of a state of flux the whole season. Yeah, Going, yeah. I mean, you know, signings, guys getting hurt, a lot of changes, and it's hard to just fit playing people rookies. in. Playing rookies. Yeah, playing rookies, bringing in you know veterans, Bayern guys. After three or four games this season, it's hard to just integrate a player into a new scheme. And they say, oh, let's go make it. There's like the pixie dust and let's go out there and everything's going to be great. It doesn't have this. The guys work so hard at training camp, the offseason, to get to know each other, to work with each other. And all of a sudden you got new players. It doesn't happen overnight. Yep. I don't care how good those players There's are. no question that's I mean, hurting them. Those no, guys. No, no, I mean, now they're on their second defensive core. I mean, Shaq Leonard gets here. He learns yeah. the defense in five days. Now he's got a new defense. New terminology. I'm, but, not, uh, I'm not sure how much new terminology there was, but a new guy was, was, was going to bring new terminology. Well, for yeah. Hassan Reddick to bring it up. is like, He brought it up. Just, yeah. yeah just, I look at like I look at Desai. I mean, like the Miami game. You know, the the I mean, the the, ta the first Tampa game. They defensively they played well. The second half of the Chiefs game. Second half of the Dallas game. Uh, they held them to two field goals. Uh, they at least had a chance. They gave the, the team a chance. The defense wasn't great, but it wasn't like what we've seen the last four weeks. Uh, I, I mean, yeah, uh, in, right. in my yeah. mind, there is zero chance they could beat Tampa with Matt Patricia. Absolutely not. I just, Absolutely not. So if there's zero chance, five percent is better than that. Yeah. But what's baffling is they beat Miami big. They beat Dallas by five. They beat Kansas City on a Sunday or Monday night, 21-17. They beat Buffalo 37-34, and then those two devastating losses. But the four wins prior, those were against really good competition. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, can they get back to that? No. Is there any way? I, I can't say get back because, like I said, those are the things that, you know, you, you can't coach. Some of the stuff is you just can't coach, and that's, you know, effort. There's one thing you can control yourself. You know, you can control your effort. And I did not see guys out there going full speed. And no, you can't, you can't flip the switch. No, you, you can't. Can. Once no, that's, you have it, you don't. We talked about it last week after the Arizona game. We talked about the, the press conference. Unfortunately, we'll, we'll be hearing from the guys shortly. And body language tells you so Absolutely. much. The words last week were kind of the same. Oh, the standard, and we're working hard. But the body language was way off. It was like, oh, doomsday. Okay. It was last right. week. That was, not, that was after Arizona. So, hey, players feed off that. You know, they're in that locker room. You see a guy coming in. Oh, you know, the energy's not there. The spark isn't there. And that impacts everybody, everybody in the organization. All right, one thing, one thing. For just, you know, I, I'm not trying to pick on this player, but remember when they were playing the Buffalo Bills and you turn around and you watched Wade Davis, ran him out, out, ran out of bounds, was, was chasing him yeah. and trying to go make a play. You don't see that. I mean, no, it was Dallas. I'm sorry, it was Dallas. And he weighed the effort that he was giving, trying to run to, and, and make sure that didn't was able to turn a corner and go up the field. 
I look at the same effort, I don't see it. I see jogging down the field. All right, he pushes a guy, sits there, and watches the running back run by, and then jogs out. You can't do that. You see guys playing against us trying to finish plays. They're running around trying to hurt our play. They, they, we didn't see the same effort from them. All right, let me throw out a quick excuse that you guys can just bat <laughs> away. Uh, no Fletcher Cox, no Slay, uh, no Devontae Bat Smith. away. It's no, effort. No, no effort. They still don't know what they're doing. They're running around with chicken, you know, with the head cut off. They're just not giving the effort because they don't know what to do. They just don't know what to do. Nobody knows the defense they're running. So if they don't know, how are they supposed to play fast? You can't play fast unless you know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I, I think whoever they had out there, I mean, they, it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't have mattered tonight. They just is something missing from this team. There's something deep inside that's gone, that they had, yeah. and it's gone. And I don't care if Fletch and Slay and whoever else, N'Kobe Dean, whoever else you want to put out there who didn't play, uh, I don't think it would have mattered. I'll tell you what, who, who else might be gone, and we don't know this yet, but Jalen Hurts and his middle finger uh, on his throwing hand, and they call it a swan neck deformity. We all saw him hold up his finger on the air, and, and it was bent. And it looked ugly. It, it looked ugly. Yeah. He went back in there and ultimately came back out. And then you've got A.J. Brown, who we don't know the status of his knee. Hopefully find that out. But you, if you're missing those two guys, I mean, <laughs> I mean come on. And Smitty's been out this week. Yeah, and he's been out, correct. And who knows if he will be out again. Next week. Do you, so, do you really think it would have been a difference if Jalen was in there or AJ was there? They I mean, Jalen was playing awful yeah. before yeah. he got hurt. Yeah. Right. No, I know. No, I don't think. I'm, I'm now looking to next Spinning week. forward, yeah. Spinning forward. Yeah. And that, that finger is only going to get ballooned up, yeah. and it's going to get difficult to grip a football, and like I play quarterback. And, and, <laughs> but it's going to get tougher. Uh, speaking of Dallas, and I don't mean the Cowboys. I mean Dallas Goddard. Here he is, post-game locker room. Um, you know, we, we performed bad in the month of December, but I got a feeling that uh, things will change. Do you understand why there, there are a lot of doubts right now about that? Or, I mean, have you guys created, do you think you've created that doubt by the way you guys have played the last month? Um, I, I don't think there's any doubts in the locker room. Um, you know, there might be doubts outside the building, but, you know, those guys aren't in the building, um, you know, going to work every day with us, uh, doing it out on the field. So um, I think we, we got a lot of confidence in the locker room, and I think uh, the belief on the outside isn't going to uh, waver uh, what we believe on the inside. And like I said, I think uh, we got everything we need to go on a really good run. Um, you know, we just got to put it together, and everybody's got to be willing to do it. You mentioned the faith in the coaching staff. Uh, why, why do you have that right now? Um, you know what? What I don't even know. What we finished eleven and seven, eleven and six. Um, you know that's not a that's not a terrible record. Obviously, we started the season off better than we ended it, but uh, you know we had a long season last year, and I just I just know everybody in this in this locker room is ready to ready to uh, you know go to work uh, for the playoffs. And you know uh, ever since what was it four or five weeks ago when we uh, clinched the playoffs, um, you know I think everybody's just been waiting for the playoffs. So um, not something that. Uh, you know, is a great thing, but I think everybody's going to be ready to go, and I think we're going to, um, you know, show the world what we're capable of. What did uh, Nick have to say to you guys? Um, you know, he he said kind of the same thing. You know, it was it was a bummer. This isn't what we expected. This isn't how we wanted to come into this game. This isn't the outcome we wanted. But uh, we got to flush it, and we got to get ready to go to work. And uh, you know, hit zero zero next week, and. Is win or go home, and um, you know I, I got the confidence in the guys here that uh, you know I don't think we'll be going home. Is it possible to flip a switch in the playoffs though, after finishing the way you guys did? Um, absolutely. Um, you know, you see it through different teams uh, getting in as a wild card, making it all the way. Um, you know, you see people that have played great all year as, coming in as the one seed, and uh, after their bye, they lose their first game. You know what I mean? So, uh, like I said, it's a new season. We just got to be ready to uh, ready to adjust to anything that uh, comes our way and be able to handle everything. And, you know, we just got to go out there and uh, play the best football we played. Does it feel like some pressure's off now? I mean, you guys are... The bar was set high from, from last season, and it's been high all season. Um, now, you know, it seems like the expectations for a lot of people aren't as great. Does, it, does, it, does that remove some pressure? Um, you know, like a lot of people say, um, you know, I, I feel like we don't really feel the pressure of the outside world. Obviously, we hold ourselves to a higher standard than anybody else. So, uh, you know, this last month, month and a half has been uh, tough for a lot of us. But uh, like I said, it's, an, it's a new season starting and uh, we got the leaders. We got the vets in this room. We got the young guys that can come and make a difference uh, for this run. So um, we just got to we just got to come ready to work and uh, go and show our best football next week. Thank you. Thank you, Dallas. 
you got to wonder whether he really believes that in his heart, Dallas Goddard. I hope he does, and his teammates do. But just hearing him say that rang false to me, and I understand he's got to say it, but come on. You've been getting your brains beat out for five of the last six weeks. Uh, uh, by the way, the 1986s, I know you know, Rube, 1986 Jets started at 10-1, and one, finished at 10-6. and six. With First Rich Coates had as our offensive coordinator. And what, but you know what? And they say, won a playoff game. And, but the charts smeared, and I got some right, babe? <laughs> come they, they won a playoff game. They, they That's playoff the last game. team before this one to be 10-1 and one and not win a division was 86 Jets. 86 Jets, and you don't want to be compared to them. No. Right, and we'll Bud take a Carson break. was their D coordinator. Sorry. Yeah, but good, good D coordinator. Too. Very Bud good. Was, Bud was great. All right, we'll take a break. We come back. Yes. Jalen Hurts scheduled to step to the podium. Yes, Nick Sirianni scheduled to tell us what he said to his guys after the game. What is going on in Eagles Nation?